loyalty is SpongeBob staying at the Krusty Krab even when his ass was being underpaid and damn near exploited. Loyalty is Daniel willing to be thrown in a den of lions for praying to God. Loyalty, listen to me. Loyalty is Javelani's sister wives, but let's not go there. I've been fascinated with the concept of loyalty in Jamaican pop culture for some time now, which is why we're gathered here today. We've definitely seen some public depictions of loyalty which are mind-boggling to say the least and even infuriating while we clap others for their loyalty dynamic. As onlookers, I have to admit, we don't really know the whole tea when it comes to these people, but today I want to look at some of the most loyal figures in Jamaican pop culture. Welcome to Beat Street Media. Tell us friend to tell two and a half friends, the neighbor, and a stray cat to subscribe for more videos about contextualized pop culture. Papuzi. This has been one of the most topical cases of loyalty in Jamaican pop culture which surfaces at least once every six months. The most recent instance was on August 30 when she clapped back at actor Keith Shibata Ramsey for claiming that Spice isn't doing much for her career. The sender may be different but the message has remained. Music onlookers, critics and fans have chimed in on this for several years, kind of positing Pampati as some poor damsel in distress who desperately needs a collaboration from Spice that the roster in the main stream stardom. Pampate's response has been rooted in the fact that yo, we already did a collaboration in 2013, you know, Slim vs Fluffy, and it was actually culturally successful. Produced by College Boys Productions, the song presented a fresh concept to dance all, you know, we had two females going at it lyrically in an era where full-figured women were being championed by personalities like Miss Kitty. The success of the song can also be attributed to their long-time friendship, which aided the natural synergy and chemistry on the record. On that note, Pampate has also had that if it's destined for them to collab again, it's gonna happen. But her focus is on building her own career and not being green-eyed over the success of others. At the end of the day, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, I'm a lover regardless. Me no care what no one wants to say. Who no care and tell me if you eat her or me not nah eat her, no time at all. Now when my girl owner is not like she show my bad face or whatever. It's not like she said, I'm putting me not doing a song with you. Or nothing, she never tell me that yet. Never. A whole heap of people approach her, a whole heap of female approach her for the collab. And she tell them, say, look here, a pampute, me I do it with. Another common claim as it relates to the public perception of their friendship is that Spice feels threatened by Pampute's natural abilities in her hardcore vocals or stage presence. And this surfaced in that scandalous Obia 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 Everywhere expose involving RT Boss and Spice. In case you were living under a rock, spiritual advisor RT Boss hurled several claims against Spice on Instagram Live in December 2020 as he was disgruntled that the DJ allegedly failed to fulfill a promise to help him transition into music. In his emotional rant, he claimed that he and Spice did underhand acts <coughs> Obia. to stifle the careers of other artists. In her response, Spice said, no, no, it was RT Boss who was trying to convince me that artists like Lady Saw, no Minister Marion Hall, who were trying to obey me. Lady Saw, Maka Diamond, Pampute, Tifa, I now mention Shensia because she just come after, like recently. But I call it four name them before because... Me see some wolf and mix up and ooh, ooh, bia, ooh, 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 bia, ooh. And when I say, me na el pampute. And me na do this for female. And wolf and something and wolf and baga baga. You know, say, when Macadam and Atana run the place, me na have no song. You see, when pampute say, pat up, call your man name. Some girl can't do that, them wish him. Me never have no song. Me de woman hungry. She added that people don't know if Pampute and her are planning a collab behind the scenes which really coincides with some of what Pampute was saying in the recent live. Despite the brawl, Pampute's loyalty has not wavered, which I find really admirable. She's confident in her lane, runs her race, and unconditionally claps for her friend, which is something we can all take away from this. Besides, we've seen Spice support Pampute in different ways, from donating to her single mother foundation to having her on her Magnum Spice It Up show. 
Sean Storm. I really believe the dictionary definition of loyalty should be revised to include something about Sean Storm. We definitely need the thesaurus to be updated because Sean Storm is a synonym for loyalty at this point. Here's how it started. Dancehall heavyweight Vibes Cartel had this formidable music collective called the Portmore Slash Gaza Empire and Sean Storm formed part of it. He really rose to prominence in 2010 with My Life. Just in case I didn't know, I'm my life. Work hard every day, tango, just to make a little dough. Yeah, that song. And everything was on the up and up until 2011 when he was arrested and charged with the murder of Clive Lizard Williams alongside his co-accused Cartel. The lead prosecutor on the case told the court that Sean was like the postman who delivered Clive to Cartel St. Andrew home to be murdered, kinda painting the picture of Sean as this loyal wingman who's gonna do anything for his friend, even if that means criminal activity. Well, the end result saw a life imprisonment handed down to Sean, likewise Cartel. Sean will be eligible for parole after serving 22 and a half years, while Cartel will have to serve 32 and a half years to that end. Both men are appealing to the Privy Council in the United Kingdom. While Sean is defending his innocence in the matter, he was convicted, which has created mixed feelings about his loyalty. On one hand, there's this general admiration and awe over his loyalty to Cartel, you know? He's hailed as a ride or die, a true friend, not a sellout. All of these things the society tells us that we're supposed to be. But then on the other side, his loyalty is viewed as detrimental because one, you're locked up, you're behind bars, you're away from your family. And this extreme loyalty has also left him in cartel shadow for more than a decade. There's almost this looming question of what has Sean positively attracted because of this loyalty? I want to highlight that Sean isn't the only loyal soldier in cartel's camp. We've seen Pac on Spice, Sika Rhymes, you know, several others show their allegiance to the world boss throughout the years. But Sean's loyalty supersedes theirs because he's so loyal to his friend that he's serving time with his friend. Are y'all putting yourselves in situations to serve time with your friends or not? Tell me in the comments. Tanisha Shorty Johnson. So if there were a who's most loyal to Cartel Tree, I'm definitely putting Sean on the left and then putting Tanisha on the right. In a 2020 interview on DJ Lava's Chat and Laugh program, Shorty gave the rundown on how she met the father of her three children at the now defunct Cactus Nightclub in Portmore, St. Catherine. Like him about poem friend them. Yeah. Sing a binger, and somebody else. Right. He send the user name Exi come call me. So I tell him friend, he said, listen, he mm. want to come to me. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, Tada, no. <laughs> oh, Tada. Yes, so I found yes. right. They hit it off and they've been inseparable since, but their relationship has endured rocky times. What really heightened the revelations for me was her confirmation that she actually stabbed Cartel, which he hinted at on the 2009 song Love Them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Drive out down on my yard. Okay. one said, take a taxi. Yeah. Take a taxi and go back at the yard. Take a taxi and go back at the yard. One and the the one and the one and the one and the one and the one Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. As he exited the vehicle, Shorty heard a female's voice. Right. The grid. So go in, yeah. Just run out panning with my ice cream. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. So where the girl in there? Yeah, I run down, don't move up, don't move up. But he must end up, it was shit again. So here comes Sean Storm, he takes him to the hospital and Cartel receives seven stitches. The relationship continued with Shorty's late mom often playing the role of a mediator and Shorty mentioned that yo, this man has cried over me many times. The ebbs and flows of their relationship are chronicled on Cartel's 2020 album to Tanisha which her label co-produced. I did a review on the album so if y'all want to check that out, it's in the description box. Shorty's loyalty is apparent when we consider that she not only got with Cartel before he was this huge star with money but she has stayed with him 
side bro his rise the infidelity a whole conviction constant fights and the public scrutiny this man had a whole reality show which saw women from different countries vying for his love and getting touchy feely and shit and to think when all is said and done and the fat lady sings, Shorty, the one he put through all of these things, is the one who stuck around, is the one he trusts to take care of his estate, is the one who's managing the careers of two of their children, like, she are run things. And yes, one may argue that money isn't everything, but she has benefited from her loyalty and pain. She's the woman who got the last laugh, if you will. Which brings us to our next patriot, Rita Marley. What sends me is seeing Rita Marley on stage singing background vocals for Bob knowing he was cheating and having children with other women. What sends me is Bob having the nerve to include no woman no cry on the set list knowing damn well he was making his wife cry on the regular with his Casanova antics. What sends me is the fact that in his dying days, the light-skinned dollies that he was running around town with were not there for him. It was a black queen who remained loyal even when he didn't have the balls to honor her throughout their marriage. Loyalty is Rita Marley. Let's backtrack. Rita and Bob met as struggling aspiring artists who soon fell in love with something beyond the music. Bob was living in Trenchtown with his mother when he met musician Vincent Tata Ford who started teaching him how to play the guitar. Well, Ford saw things heating up between Bob and Rita and gave him a room for them to, you know, have like a Bible study. They got married in 1966 and welcomed their first child the following year. All of this was before his rise to prominence and Rita, according to The Voice, said her husband had never really checked for girls prior to stardom. He was very shy and he was very, I would say, snobbish. So I was very surprised when he started having all these women because that really wasn't him. That was not his lifestyle. In fact, it was a very long time before I was able to even touch is here. That's how serious he was. Not against women, but he was just focused on making something of his career. So back then, there was no notion of him being about girls, girls, girls. That only came after fame, popularity, and stardom. Rita wasn't only the mother to three of his children and her daughter that he adopted, but she also helped his career as a member of his backing group, the I3s. So here's a picture. They're building a family together, they're making music together, traveling together, and really building Bob's dream to positively impact the world. World. And then, as she said, stardom came and so too did challenges in their relationship. In the Marley documentary, Rita speaks about transcending from a wife to like a mother big sister figure. So when they were on tour, she always ensured he was on top of his game, even if that meant ushering women out of his room when it was time to get back to work. She said she was able to overcome the infidelity and maintain her sanity for the sake of her children, but also because she felt that Bob really loved her. He didn't want to see any other man look at me. He was very jealous, but that gave me an assurance that he he really did deeply, dearly love me. And he still does because his spirit remains with me. I find it amusing sometimes the way the other women threw themselves at him. And deep down in his heart, he maybe only had one love. The other things were like a fling or a period of time that created that sense of fantasy that comes with show business. Speaking of flings, Bob had several of those throughout their marriage, some of which resulted in the expansion of the Marley clan. I'm not sure Cindy Breakspear would have caused their situation with Bob a fling, but the 1975 Miss World started dating Bob a year before her crowning and apparently didn't know that he was still married. During a 2014 Bob Marley lecture, Breakspear revealed that it was after she gave birth to their son Damien that she found out that his marriage was still very much intact. Nonetheless, the sister wives would go on to have Christmas dinners together together and be civil, though in the end as he fought with a rare form of skin cancer, it is said that Bob only wanted Rita by his side. Kinda similar to Shorty in a bigger sense, it's amazing how the woman Bob dishonored the most ended up turning his $250,000 estate into a mega operation which earned at least $20 million each year. It was through her leadership that Bob's brand expanded to a museum, a recording studio, a vinyl and a CD pressing plant, record stores, a book division, and a slew of family approved merch and products like headphones, coffee, and a CBD line. I want to also highlight that Rita's allegiance to Bob also made her a victim of gun violence in 1976 when a failed assassination attempt on Bob's life saw her being shot in the head. Thankfully, the bullet was successfully removed during surgery but man 
Rita was out here, putting up with Bob's cheating, welcoming his side children, playing sister to the side vegetarian biscuit, and taking a bullet for him. A lot of people say that she won in the end by earning his estate and being recognized worldwide as a wife. What are your thoughts on this? Would you have stayed? Let's talk in the comments, baby. Until next time, subscribe over your nice. Subscribe over your nice. Take care, guys.